everybody. Welcome back to the Pokemon Adventures Book Club. I'm looking at the wrong camera. It's this camera. No, it's this one. It's this one. It's this one. It's the there other are two one. cameras yes. set up in this thing. Okay. Yeah, okay. But we're here. Hello, I'm Pokekells with a slight, slight cold. And I am Hilda. Ooh. <laughs> um, so welcome back. This is this is gonna be our second episode of the Pokemon Adventures Book Club. This book was pretty crazy, oh right? Oh my days. Yes. It was it was kind of dark, man. <laughs> It's kind of dark. Yeah, a lot of pretty crazy stuff happened. Um, so uh, it's been a little while since our last adventure. Um, uh, we are we're from different countries and we're from different time zones. And we're all both we have work. jobs. Yeah, two two jobs even. Yeah, <laughs> um, four four jobs between the two of us. Yeah. right. We busy people. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. You know what? So put away your hat. Um, <laughs> okay, but hats. I mean, let's just. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I guess it's a new expression. Um, so I guess let's we let's we can get right into this. Um, since my voice is kind of s- sad, um, I might I might be coughing a, a lot. But um, you won't. Do you want Do you want to start off with the with the first chapter, adventure number fifteen? Um. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, it's called War Turtle Wars. Gotta love it. Yeah. Gotta love that kind of stuff. Which, now, in this chapter, which is great. Oh, did you want to say something? No, I just, I just am excited because I love this character. <laughs> right. I'm excited to introduce her to our viewers. Yeah, in this chapter, we uh, meet a new character. But first, um, Red's beautiful Bulbasaur evolves into an Ivysaur, and that's cute. Congratulations, Bulbasaur! We are so proud of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, what happens then is that this new strange lady character comes and she's like, oh my God, congratulations, Red. You have an Ivysaur now. That's cool. And everything she says has little hearts and stuff after them. (laughs) Um, So yeah, like she's like kind of flattering and he's like, oh, that's a girl. She's interested in me. I like that. Um, So she she sells him. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So she's, she's like selling him some items. That are supposed to improve Pikachu or his Pokemon's, um, you know, battles and stuff for um, quite some money. 6,000 money, to be specific. (laughs) It's a lot of money. But um, what happens next? You'll never, you'll never guess what happens next. It is... (laughs) Um, Pikachu is like battling a pincer. Um, Doesn't seem like an even fight to me. But, um, right. right. He gets dressed up so cute, though. Okay, okay. First off, actually, I have to say something because, um, this morning I spilled coffee right all over this page. No. Um, it, it's all, it's all over little Thor Pikachu. I'm so, so sad about it. Um, yeah, I was like getting everything ready. I was like, I got my coffee, feeling good. And then suddenly <laughs> I was just like, no. Do, do you want just me to show the right non-stained version oh. or? Yeah, yeah, we can we can compare. I mean, like honestly, I th- I don't think it looks too bad on the camera, but like it's definitely like sploosh. Yeah, it, and it, so, it's so know, like probably red. Red is throwing all these items to Pikachu, and they don't seem to be working. Uh, so he just throws all of them at the at Pikachu, and Pikachu just looks like a combination of Thor and Wonder Woman, and it is yeah, Wonder it is, Wonder it is the cutest the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's so cute. Um, <laughs> He's so mad. It's so, he's so mad. It's so it's so he's, great. He's not having it. He's like, nah. <laughs> but you know, he looks cute, so I I'm digging it. <laughs> yeah. But um <clears throat> then Red is like, oh shit, this oh, I mean, oh no. This <laughs> this uh it's chill. this is a problem because it's not working, and I got scammed by a lady. Scammed <laughs> by a lady. Yeah, so um yeah, so he totally got scammed. He's he's all mad about it. Um and uh so so I guess that kind of rolls right up into chapter 2, right? Cuz she's oh, like don't forget uh, that, there, he's like, that something important happens or is that is that a, something really important happens. Yeah. Um, he talks he's trying to get them no, back. No, no, he's talking to Professor Oak and Oak tells him for the first time ever that there's a third starter pokemon and it's Squirtle and it got stolen. And um again, you'll never guess what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> When is the next chapter? Um, it's it's soon. It's after it's after we find where that little guy went. Yeah, we first. Yeah, but also right. we first run in, run into um the girl again. Does he ever say her name? Has she said her name yet? 
No, um, right? No. So, no, mysteri- she's a mysterious She's girl. mysterious and she's selling things to people and it's all a scam and it's mean. Oh, no, 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 it is. You know, he, you know what happens is that is she's knocked. Okay, so this is what, this is what happens. So she, uh, he corners her. She sends out her war turtle, which is maybe the stolen war t- squirrel oh. that happened. <laughs> and um, he uh, he sends out Snorlax and he like cracooms them and they are uh, and, and like totally knocks her out. And so like, he goes up to her and he like steals her purse and it says green in the purse. Oh, right. That's what happens. And yeah. so we know that her name is green. Um, uh, and uh, and but at like one point at one point, she like hugs him to try to get him to not attack her. Or whatever, but that's important because it's revealed like at the very end of the chapter that his gym badges are gone and she's stolen them. But she's just a little pickpocket thief, and I love her. Yeah, she's hilarious. Um, yeah, she uses yeah, her, and that's her lady that charm to. Uh, I know to it's be just awful. So shameless about it. It's so <laughs> funny. It's so so yeah. funny. <laughs> All right, next um, up, what ha- what up? So, so the next chapter is Taurus the Tyrant. And, um, so, uh, he, so he, whatever, uh, Red is trying to, uh, to find the girl, obviously, because he needs to, um, he needs to get his gym badges back. And so Team Rocket is looking for this girl. And so what better thing to do than to infiltrate Team Rocket by using their clothes, which is wild and crazy, who I don't, like, a 10 year old boy, like, suddenly is just like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, a but team. Isn't Rocket. that a thing in the Pokemon Whatever. game either, where you steal Team Rocket's clothes to infiltrate their thing? It isn't like a gold, oh, it's gold and gold silver, silver yeah. isn't it? Ah. Yeah. Or something like that. Anyway, um, but that's, you know, that's exciting. But he breaks into their base, and there is a, a Mewtwo growing in a tank. And it's not even done growing. It looks really grotesque. Like, see him? He's like, it's just like floating in there. Yeah, it's not finished. And he's just like partially, oh, it's so gross. But um, but that's like, ooh, and he's like all freaked out. But then he realizes that Team Rocket is looking for Green because she stole their nefarious plans. And then he was like, oh, so I guess Green isn't all that bad. She's just like a chaotic neutral type. And um, and so uh, and so at a different point in the city, Green is like cornered by Team Rocket right now. And a whole so bunch of she's them. Like, she's not even she's cornered. Got the she's just I like know, a bunch of them. Totally surrounded. surrounded. <laughs> she's she's in a bad bad straits. Um, and so she's about to like get taken down. When lo and behold, who should appear to kind of try to help help out, obviously, but it, it's red because he's with Team Rocket. He's dressed up as Team Rocket, like surprising nobody. <laughs> the crazy thing about this one is that um, we see Hitmonlee's stretchy spring legs. Like before this, before I read this for the very first time when I read it, I didn't realize no. that this, the the legs were stretchy so and arms. springy. I mean, I just didn't read its Pokedex, but yeah, it's crazy. He's a he's a crazy it's guy. It's arms um, with legs. Yeah, it's legs. It's legs. <laughs> New Nintendo IP. <laughs> legs. <laughs> great, great. But um, so anyway, the uh, but then there's like this Tauros, right? And the Tauros is like running amok. It's about to uh, it's about to like go after them. The Tauros is like is like bad, and so and so um, yeah. And don't forget this. The Tauros is yeah. This Tauros yeah. This Tauros uh, is like commanding the other Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's like commanding the other Pokemon because he's like the alpha Pokemon, I guess, or something. And so like they're they look like they're about to like you know go go crazy wild. And then Green does like a little switcheroo, Madu, <laughs> where she sends her Ditto out. The Ditto becomes the Taros and it controls all the Pokemon, and then sends them back to attack Team Rocket, which is very 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 clever. Yeah, very very. Cute. And Ditto looks cute um, as heck. And then she rounds it out by sending out Jigglypuff and floating away like a big balloon. <laughs> so that's basically she's the best character in the entire. I wish manga. that was a real thing. Um, like I know she just like totally saves the day, and <laughs> and then she's like winking, and you can see that her earrings are his gym badges, and he's like, bah, 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 bah. oh, I never noticed that. <laughs> um, but they get, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's wearing his earring, his his badges, his earrings. That's hilarious. Um. But uh, but yeah, them floating away with a Jigglypuff and being like, we got the disc is like basically the end of that chapter. Well, actually, it's Red thinks that they have the romp. disc and he's like a little he's a little bit upset about it. And uh, then later we find out that she just like switcherooed them around and she has the disc. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, right. That is true. That is true. You read it more recently than I did. You're the expert on this one. Um but that, uh, I guess that takes us to chapter 17, Adventure 17, The Jinx Jinx. The Jinx Jinx. Which is a great title. 
which starts out with <laughs> Mew just sitting there, and then you find out it's not Mew, it's Ditto. But you know, sassy, Sass- sassy Mew. I need to. Where is it? There it is. Such sassy a Mew. Here sassy it is. Mew. Very very cute. Um, yeah, this is just kind of like explaining what Mew is, and that they're creating a, a new Pokemon out of Mew's DNA. They need that disc to make Mewtwo. Uh, I don't think they know that it's called mm-hmm. Mewtwo yet, but um, right. Green just really wants Mew. She wants Mew just so she can sell it. <laughs> because I know she's so, she's so she's so like not. I mean, like I guess like that was the perfect way of describing her is like she's just she's just chaotic. She's chaotic. She neutral. is chaotic. She is neutral. not lawful. She is yeah. not evil. She's just chaotic neutral. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. She just really wants to sell this Mew, and then oh no, they found Mew. That is such a coincidence. Oh, it appears. It appears in front of them. But what also appears in front of them is Team Rocket. Oh, no. <laughs> again. Ugh. Team Rocket again. These guys. Yeah. Why? So they're getting, they're getting like screwed up by Jinx. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're getting really messed yeah, up. Yeah, Jinx is angry and evil looking. She looks like insane in most of these. Like this entire... Um, all of these are it's just she looks like a duck tail it's just complete that chaos one right there that it's one complete <laughs> chaos <laughs> this entire just she's wild she's page. wild it's crazy um yeah <laughs> but red what does he ha- what happens wait i'm confused mew 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 saves them mew sensing that they're beautiful and wonderful <laughs> people that aren't evil comes in and is like no i'm mew and just mews mews out and, and saves them all. Yep. And then uh, she did, they didn't capture Mew, but they did capture it kind of on camera. And now yes, Green is, yes. is pleased because she can sell the picture because she only cares yeah, right? about to money. The newspapers. <laughs> to the newspapers or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's great. Uh, oh, and this next chapter. Red, get, what, Red oh, gets his, yes. his and, badges back with a little oh, note yeah, saying little thanks back. for everything, yes. sweetie yeah, pie. A <laughs> Sweetie pie. <laughs> it's cute. Where is it? Just focus up. Focus up. It's not going to focus. It doesn't it's a matter. Sweetie pie. It's a sweetie pie. Yeah. Just take our word for it. <laughs> um, great. So, um, and then, and then we get to the next chapter, which is A Tale of Nine Tales, which uh, is one of my favorite chapters. It was so, it was so fun. It was kind of more like a little like one-off story, whereas like, I think it's kind of been like a little progression so far here. Why? I'm, I'm, I guess, yeah. yeah. It's not I'm, like, like important to here. the story that much, but it just shows you like, hey, what? What's, but it's still fun. Yeah, it's what's still, Blue like, been fun. up to? Like, um, Yeah. So it opens up with Blue uh, bringing a bunch of coins into the game corner and exchanging them for a mysterious Pokemon. And um, Red's like running through the, the running on the outskirts of town and um, he and Blue like collide with each other. They all drop their Pokeballs and they Real pick quick. up their Pokeballs and they're like, oh, you, you dummy, I'm, I'm so mad at you. And they like go on their way. But then um, uh, but then as Red is walking, he's there's like a stampede of Pokemon coming his way after these two little girls and he sends out his Pokemon. But it's not his Pokemon. It's all of Blue's oh, no. Pokemon. And then Blue got all of Red's Pokemon and it's such a mishap. Oh, can we discuss so something funny. real quick? Do you think that yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Blue actually won those coins or did he buy them? Because I always buy my coins because you know what? I, mm. I buy my coins because I want that he- Dratini, okay? So, you know, do you think he... Do you think he won them? Um, yeah, I think I think that he bought the coins. He bought the coins, right? <laughs> only because it's more it's only because it's more efficient and faster. And I feel like Blue is a, an efficient and a fast worker, <laughs> and so I feel like that's what that's what he would do. That, that, um, I, I don't see Blue honestly like in a casino all night, like, right? Gambling until he gets the right amount right. of coins. Unless he's playing Voltorb Flip, because that does have some and skill it's involved. The best game. And I love that game. It's so I much love fun. That game. It's the best game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um so anyway, uh he manages to he 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 sends out all of Blue's Pokémon. He saves these two girls from like the stampede, but then he's like, "Oh my gosh, all these Pokémon. Well, uh I guess we're just going to have to be friends with each other for right now." Um but none of them like none of Red's Pokémon are like or, I'm sorry, none of Blue's Pokémon are like into it. They're very like stoic. They're very like focused on their training. Like Red is like, hey, let's sit down and have some dinner. And they're like, no, no, we got to do some push-ups and stuff. <laughs> and so like they're just like jogging around. And then we cut over to Blue, who is making Red's Pokemon train. And they're all like, <gasps> they're hating life. They're all hating yeah, it. They're, not- they're like, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad. I like how, how and, Blue's um, like, I'll just make do with these. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's just like, mm, yeah, these little losers. But um, 
Anyway, so Red tries to make a camp in the night and he's trying to like get the Pokemon to eat. But then suddenly on the horizon, he sees a Ninetales and he sees Blue fighting the Ninetales with his Pikachu. And Pikachu is like suddenly like very powerful and he's like using him to his full potential. Using and stuff. Tail Strike, and, an actual um, move that's real. <laughs> Yeah, and so and so Red is like, no, I I want to I want to help with the battle, and Blue's like, don't even don't even, and he sends out uh, Blue's Machoke, um, and so he's like battling with the Machoke, and then suddenly the Machoke evolves into the Machamp because they <gasps> inadvertently traded, which is great, um, and uh, the the Machamp like pins down the Nine Tails, and uh, they throw they both throw a Pokeball, somebody catches it, they don't know who catches it, and so they're like. Well, it's my nine tails because I sent out the Pokemon and I caught it. Red's like, Red's like, you know, I, I sent it out. The Pokemon that I used defeated it. But then Blue's like, but it was my Pokemon that defeated it. So it's my Pokemon. And so they're fighting over this nine tails. Um, eventually, uh, uh, eventually Blue wins the argument and he gets to keep the nine tails because Blue gets all the cool Pokemon, I guess. Um, yeah, and then but, at the end, um, I don't, at what the, I like. Yeah, at the yeah, end of the chapter. Just, I'm just going to show this panel. It's a panel where... Um, Blue is just like standing there with its Pokemon and its Pokemon are suddenly like really snuggly and they they really just like want to hug him and it's adorable like it's Porygon just says snuggle <laughs> it's so cute and, I know um, I know all all of his tough Pokemon are now like little softies yeah. that are like being all sweet and happy adorable. And, then, <laughs> and then Red's Pokemon are like Red is like okay guys are you ready to go and they're like no, we're not ready to go. We're ready to train. And then they get, they, they like are trying to like jog after him. And, and he's like, no, my Pokemon. That's so adorable. it was like a little uh, tale of two. What is it? The Prince and the Popper? Like that kind of, that kind of situation. A little switcheroo. Classic Shakespearean moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so re- right. really fun. The next I love chapter, that chapter. <laughs> number 19 is called Blame It on the Eevee. Which is um, blame it on the EV. Which is a great song by the Jackson Five. <laughs> um, I like this chapter a lot. Um, in this chapter, Red um, ha- hits what city is it? It doesn't say so. I don't remember. Celadon. Celadon. It's Celadon. I didn't, didn't remember. Yep. Um, and he, what happens? Oh, he. I think he got like run over by um, a stampede heading to Erica, the gym leader of the city. And everyone just adores Erica. Erica is like their favorite human on earth. She's like a powerful person in the city. And um, she mm-hmm. also thinks she's great herself. So that happens. And she's a gym but, uh, leader. Red, yeah, Red finds out she's the gym leader and and he um, he challenges her. But she's like, yeah, sure. But first, you got to do something. And she says that he has to go capture an Eevee. And he had no idea what an Eevee is. So what happens? He gets a phone call from our buddy Bill. Yay, Bill! It's Bill. He's back. <laughs> I love him. That was a the stranger <laughs> accent that you did last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love you're right. Him. You're right. I blame it on this. I blame it on the sickness. <laughs> I love him. Now, um, yeah. Now something shady has been going on because um, Erica is like shooting. At a shooting range for some weird reason. I don't understand, (laughs) but she is. She's like some socialite. She's just like doing socialite stuff. Yeah, yeah. And her followers (laughs) are like, hey, maybe people will find out about your plan. Oh no, that's going to be crazy. And we're like, what plan? This is so exciting. What does it mean? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Then Bill is like together with, with the boy with a red oh my wow. gosh well, we, can you can we read this can yeah, we read this yeah that's what together? i was gonna say the... um bill, <laughs> okay. bill says a great line and i'm gonna make kelly say the line and i will be i will, so I will talking be about... red in this panel okay 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 they're talking about they're talking about uh recent sightings of evie around the town because they still don't know what it's supposed to look yeah. like yeah so, oh, oh okay. i thought we were gonna oh, start <gasps> looks like a little more info is trickling down the old cyber creek here Here's a feller that says he saw an Eevee breathe far. How far did it breathe? <laughs> Not far. Far. <laughs> just accents. He means fi- fire. He means fire is what he meant. Yeah. Well, that's he just, means fire. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they, they, they run into this Eevee and this Eevee is suddenly electric. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy as heck. Yeah. But then. Some wild stuff. He's like turning into like a, like a hybrid. He's, he's like Jolteon and Eevee. Yeah, it's weird. Mixed into one. And then and later like, suddenly he turns into water because um, Red sends out Diglett. Now he's water. So he's adapt, adapt in real time. Um, 
Yeah, and then he uh, and then he puts Ivy Sword out, and it turns into Flareon, and so like something crazy is going on with this Eevee, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, is this what Eevee does?" And then we, the readers at home, are like, "No, no, so it's what's not. Going on we, here? Know, we know how this works." <laughs> <laughs> but right, so um, Bill notices something in its ear, and it's like Bill is like, um, "It is. It is. It can tell what." what type your Pokemon is with its ears. And I'm like, that makes no sense because it can also just look at the attacks and know what it is, but whatever. Um, it attacks the Eevee, like it closes its ears and Eevee gets attacked and Eevee is really hurt. And that makes me sad. I don't like it when Eevee are hurt, but... I know, me either. They find out that the little device in its ear means it's like a turbocharged Eevee, um, which uses this device to switch switcheroo between um, uh, Vaporeon, Jolteon and Flareon. And... Red gets real yeah, mad. Yeah. He's like, okay, this Erica girl, she she's up to no good. She wants this EV because she's experimenting on it and she's crazy. So he gets real mad and runs to the gym and chapter 20 happens called Meanwhile, File yeah. Plume. Meanwhile, File Plume. So he bursts into the gym and says, Erica, you're hurting Pokemon. I can't believe that you've done this. And then she's like, ah, most impressive. I see that you caught an Eevee. Ha ha. And he's like, what are you doing? You're being, you're being coy. Um, and she's like, well, I'll fight you for the gym badge now. And he's like, I, uh, fine, I'm, I'm going to fight you. And so they start to fight. And this is a pretty epic fight. I mean, like first she sends out a Tangela. They're like pretty evenly matched. Um, but, uh, but it beats her Ivysaur. So he sends out Polyrath, who's like chilling, um, trying to defeat Bellsprout sends out Pikachu, things are going well. So she, he's like, he's like kind of, kind of like, kind of got her on the ropes, but then she's starting to talk. Uh, uh, but then, wait, sorry, 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 hold on. Um, <laughs> no, she's, she, Pikachu is out and she, the vile plume knocks out the Pikachu. And so that's actually his last Pokemon. Yep. So he loses this battle. And then she's like, well, haha, you lost. So I'm going to euthanize your Eevee. And he's like, what? No, don't do that. And so, yeah, I mean, anyway, she's like, the least I can do is like put it out of his misery. Yeah, And, I and got, then she's like, no, I don't want you to do it. I got really confused at this bit because I was, well, I was like, wait, Erica's evil? That is like, is every gym leader in this this book going to be evil? Because I'm not okay with that. Gym leaders should also be like nice people. But I got really confused about yeah. that. But we'll figure that out later. But then, but then it resolves because suddenly, and then suddenly something really crazy happens. Like a ghost rises out of Pikachu. Right? It's sub substitute like, apparently, but it just looks like Pikachu. It, yeah, just... it turns out to be substitute, but like a ghost comes out and like attacks, uh, yeah. attacks Vileplume, which is kind of cool. Like I like this version of substitute, but it was like, I mean, I know they did that for like the what is going on sort of thing, but like uh, uh, it, it looks, was a surprise. Yeah, it looks crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, so the substitute... Um, the substitute comes out and uh, is, uh, you know, Pikachu's feeling okay. Um, kind of. I mean, Pikachu's but, like using uh, its Erica last power to to rescue this Eevee. That's that is true. But he's like ready to continue to fight. Yeah. And um, but then Erica's like, "Aw, and how cute! You're 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 using your last breath to try to fight." And so here we go. And she sets the machine to restoration again. And it turns out that it was just a test, and she wanted to make sure that Red was a good guy and not a bad guy. And like, you know, honestly, Erica, you're kind of a jerk for doing that. You could have just, you know, said, but I mean, I guess you have to like prove your loyalty somehow. Yeah, um, I guess. But um, <laughs> I mean, like, I guess I mean, her, her methods are not the methods I would use, but like, I guess they work. It's a way to do it. But um, <laughs> Right. And so she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're in a secret society against the evil gym leaders. And then he's like, sick. And she gives him a gym badge, the rainbow badge. Hey. And um. And he takes and Eevee. And then it's all, yeah. He, and he takes Eevee and, he, and everything's all hunky-dory. And then um, we pan out and suddenly Sabrina's floating in the sky with her Kadabra. <laughs> and she's like... <laughs> Sabrina looks dope <laughs> in a Team Rocket <laughs> outfit, though. Like, I like her team. Yeah, she yeah, she really yeah. does. She, she very, very much Now, does. the next chapter um, is a complete mess. Like, I, I was so confused by this entire chapter. Um, because this chapter is just another like little one-off story. Yeah, so and so Red it's goes crazy. to the Safari Zone and Safari Zone, and it's called Long Live the Nido King. Now this Safari Zone is different than we know it because he just like he's on a raft just looking at Pokemon. He's like he's not even supposed to capture them. I think like it doesn't really mm. like it. Set it talks about capturing a little bit, but it's doesn't really seem like it's the like the thing you do in the Safari Zone. So that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Also, he has a mechanical Pidgey like a, friend. Jungle Cruise. 
I know. I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, a mechanical Pidgey friend that's like it's his guy through the Safari Zone, and it's funny as hell. Like I, I really, I really like that. Uh, the little mechanical Pidgey just sitting mm. there being a smart boy. Um. Right. And and I do want to make clear that even though the Pidgey has like a speaker, it's not like a human talking through the speaker. This Pidgey has his own personality and he's like a sentient robot. Yeah, it's it's kind of so, scary. Uh, I mean, this yeah, was the 90s. It's, it's I mean, very, how very did they cute. even, you know, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but um, they yeah. he suddenly runs into two Nido King fighting over a Nido Queen. And um, Red wants to, I think he wants to capture a Nido King, but he actually capture, captures the Nido Queen. And the Nido King become like completely so angry at him that they just like They're mess so him mad. up. He falls off the raft. All he has is his Pidgey friend <laughs> and some items. And um, yeah, they're pretty angry at him. They're like, this boy, yeah, this boy needs to go. He took my love away in his ball. That's so mean. <sighs> yeah. Um, so yep. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just running from this Nido King. Um, his his Pokemon friends are waiting at him in like a little room where all the like the waiting room for his Pokemon because obviously you can't take them into this far zone. They're so they're so scared. They're, so they're like scared. really worried for him. Yeah, they just want oh. their trainer to be safe, and it's just like a very very much just running from the Nido King. Um, and then right. at some point he gets captured by a Victory Bell. And this Victory Bell, this kind of interesting like lore, I feel like, because this Victory Bell captures um, Red and he thinks he's going to be eaten. Well, obviously, it's like a flesh eating plant. So um, it looks like it looks like Red's done for. And Pikachu gets sadder every second. Yeah. Oh, wait, but there's a new chapter. And then the Pidgeybot is. Yeah. Oh, yes, there is. The Pidgeybot is also damaged at this time. And so he's like trying to carry the Pidgeybot and make like make sure everybody's OK. Even um, he's like even so, sweet to like robots. That's he's such a sweet boy. Hell yeah. I Red. know. He's just a, he's just a sweet boy. He's a sweet boy. Yeah. Um, so Victory <laughs> Bell's taking him. He's taking him somewhere and we don't know exactly where where he's being taken. Um, but the Pidgeybot tells him that it's their evo. It's the it, he, they come upon like a clearing full of Weeping Bell and Bell Sprout. And the Pidgeybot says that it's their evolution ritual and they're evolving from Bellsprout to Weeping Bell and to Victory Bell. And the uh, and they need food in, a, in order to do it. And so Red gets strung up alongside like all these other Pokemon that are getting like their vitals drained by these uh, by these Victory Bell and these Bellsprout. Oh, and um, these you say Bell. Pokemon, but there's an animal on here that doesn't look like a Pokemon. Which one is it? Which one is it? Um, there's this panel where I mean, I he's next to like, like Pharaoh and another this thing. Yeah, but there's yeah. Anyway, so he's like strung up in the, and it's gross. And um, so let's see here. So the Pokemon evolve in their sleep while the elders feed them fertilizer, right? And so uh, and so Red's like Red's like okay, we got we got a plan. Like he's up next. We're about to die. And he gives uh, he gives the Pidgeybot the Poke Flute, which, as you know, wakes up Pokemon. I think it was so Pidgeybot's idea. On that he's smart. He's smarter than Red. <laughs> oh yeah, he is smart. He's like he's like Rotom Dex. Um, and so uh, so he wakes up all of the Pokemon so that they can't evolve, and then they throw out a Pokemon doll attack to distract them. And um, and while they're like going to do that, they uh, Pidgeybot like helps untie him from the from the ropes, and they like run away. But first, uh oh, who should appear but that Nido King that he Wait. struck earlier, and he actually oh. hurt its eye. Yeah, he actually hurt its eye, so you know it's the same Nido King because its eyes all closed, and it's like, oh, I'm still mad. I found you. <laughs> I'm um, so mad at you. Right, and so uh, and so he he doesn't know exactly what to, where Pidgeybot's like, oh no, we're doomed. But Red's like, no, we're not, and he turns the Nido King against the the Weeping Bell, and he. Uh, and he suddenly catches, uh, he, no, so he turns, the, he distracts the Nido King by showing him like the Weeping Bell. He catches the Victory Bell and then he uses the Victory Bell to fight the Nido King because he's just a resourceful boy. He's a smart boy. Um, yeah. And, he's definitely a smart yeah, boy. So he's tying up the Nido King with all the vines and then he catches the Nido King. He now has a Nido King, but hey, guess what? This is the Safari Zone, meaning there's plenty of duplicates. So more Nido King, more Victory Bell, all these Pokemon coming out of the woodwork. And he's like, oh, snap. So he catches um, them all. And then it pans back to the Pokemon <laughs> Center. Yeah, he basically catches them all. <laughs> and so, yeah, it pans away for just a second. Pikachu's like, I'm so worried. And then like suddenly like Red's walking up with this like stampede of Pokemon. And look, he got like 50 Pokemon there. <laughs> he caught like every single Pokemon in the so Safari funny. Zone. 
And they're all happy now because every Pokemon that Red catches loves him what I, immediately. What I really so. like about this chapter is not only is, is it like a little bit of a fresh, like in between chapters kind of thing. It's like kind of funny. Yeah. Like, you know that he's on a journey, so he's going to like do different things than only fight Team Rocket and gym leaders. But what I really like about this chapter right. is that you can like see kind of like how the Pokemon live and what their rituals are and like some kind of lore kind of things. And that's what I, yeah. I really that like that. That is definitely some cool stuff. Come here, come here, come here. You want a greenie? Come here, come here, come here. No, no, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You can be part of the club. Come here, be in the book club, be in the book club. All right, Wallace is now in the book club. No, 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 no. Well, this is he has something club. to say um, about this about this chapter. I think it was his favorite chapter. That's why he got really excited. I, I think so too. It was his favorite chapter, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how this one ended up working out, right? Yeah, but like, the next chapter, the chapter is, is kind of strange because it starts. It's called um, "Make Way for Magmar." It's number twenty three, by the way. It starts out with some kids looking at the the Viridian City gym which has no gym leader at the moment because he's like gone. He's gone. The elusive mm -hmm. Giovanni, he's gone. And they show a picture Where of Giovanni. And what happens? Red comes out of a cave with who else but Giovanni looking like a nice dude. He's traveling with Giovanni. He's smiling. He's wily. He's a little old man. Yeah. He's just chilling. They, they're they've been so looking happy for together. fossils together and they're just having a good time together. It's such a strange thing because to us, Giovanni has always been just like a bad dude, you know? Um, well, he probably is yeah, still. Yeah, we know his but tricks. He's, he's good at pretending to be friendly, at least. <laughs> well, kind of, because like Red is like, he says something like, even gym leaders tremble in fear of me. And then he like, like he's so, he's got like this nice little like n innocuous face and then he's like twick and he just like turns evil for a second yeah, and then back to like, normal. Um, excuse me, <laughs> what did you just so say, classic, boy? So classic. <laughs> and so yeah, so we know that he's not a good guy and so but so now like the danger mounts, right? <laughs> the, the danger, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Um, what happened? They they are about to go to the museum or the fossil, the museum of history or science museum. Museum of Science. Yes. Because um, they went looking so for fossils. Museums. That's why we, they were in that cave. And I think what happened is that Red ran into this man in the in the cave who was looking for fossils. And um, they decided to like continue their journey together. But what happened is they arrive at the Museum of Science and it's on fire or on far. No. Is it on far? On far. <laughs> it's on far. Yeah. And no. uh, it's because of two Magmar who just, for some reason, just lit it on fire. Do we even find out why? No, right? No, I mean, I guess that kind of thing just happens in the Pokemon uh, world, Yeah, they were just having a, having a chill and uh, setting this museum of science on fire. <laughs> yeah, on yeah. fire. <laughs> and um, Red is just, like, being inventive, trying to, like, turn... Turn off the fire. That is not a. Turn off the is fire. That, is that a way to say it? He's turning off the fire. He's he's trying to smother it with his Snorlax. It doesn't work. You put put the fire out. That's I think that's and the right. And while word this is happening, Giovanni is just uh, looking at him, thinking, "Hmm, this guy's kind of smart. Like well, he's inventive. What's he doing?" Mm -hmm. In the end, he uses his, his just like freshly caught sand shrew to create um kind of like a a sand. What do you call those? Sandstorm. Yeah, he's trying to like put it out with sand. He's trying to smother smother the fire with sand, and it's kind of working. Yeah, yeah. Magmar are covered in sand, and um, um, wait, where is it? Right here. Um, uh, Giovanni's yeah. like, finish these Magmar. They are evil Magmar. They tur. They they set the Museum of Science on fire, and Red Red is like, you know what? No, they're like they can't move. It's kind of sad. I'm not gonna hurt them. That is that's just sad. And he's just a sweet boy. And Giovanni's like, wow, he won't finish them off. Ha 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 ha. He's like, that, ha, what an interesting boy you are. <laughs> yeah, so he gives him the... Does he say what it is? No, he doesn't. He gives him a stone um, with a little bug in it. And we don't know what it is yet, but we will fossil, find out very soon. And he leaves. He's like, take care, is. Red. I'm a sweet man, Giovanni. Well, Red, Red leaves because we stick with Giovanni for, for that moment. And he does something... So effed up, man. <laughs> this it's so red is walking away, right? Like, and um, the magmar start to like kind of thaw out a little bit, and they break out of their little like their little uh, sand trap. But then suddenly it's like, whoosh, and they're totally frozen. And it turns out that Giovanni sent out his cloister. He freezes the magmar, and then he's like, cloister, finish it. 
and Cloister crumble. He Cloister attacks the Magmar and shatters them, which means that they're definitely dead. Can we take a moment? He just murders these Can we Magmar. Take a moment of silence for the Magmar, please. They crumble. They crumble. <laughs> they were frozen alive. Wow. Some met that's some metric. That's a good song for you. Thank you. <laughs> it is a good song. I love that song. Have you heard that song? It's it's uh I don't know what that was. I, What's that a real song? It's it's a it's a metric song. It's um it beating like a hammer. Maybe it's called hammer. So what did you what did you, what did you think up. of this chapter? Um super effed up. Super cool, though. I, I liked it. It reminded me... Yeah, it reminded me of this episode of Avatar The Last Airbender when they go through a tunnel in the mountains, but only because they went through a tunnel in the mountains, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's kind of neat because, like, Red kind of was played for a fool there. He didn't recognize that, like, his greatest enemy was right yeah, in front of him. Yeah. And so, like, ooh. Like, that's kind of a cool, like, thing for... I'm sure that we'll see later because, like, of course he's going to remember this guy as, like, his buddy that gave him right. the old Amber. I mean, <gasps> the Kelly, weird fossil. What did you just the say? Fossil, the something fossil. The something, the something fossil. fossil. I don't know. Alex, can you bleep that out? <laughs> <laughs> it was a secret. She um, said he, a secret. He won't. He won't. He won't. I know. <laughs> um... So, so then we go into chapter 24, which is called What my a Dragon My favorite Eye. Pokemon. Oh, what a Dragon Eye. My favorite boy. You can talk about my Yay. favorite boy. Um, Do it. Go. <laughs> so, uh, we can, actually, the first panel, we kind of see that we're near the Seafoam Islands, which, as you know, look like two... Boobies. I can't believe you said um, that. In the, they, they do. They just do. They, they just do. They, I'm sorry. It's just facts. It's just facts. <laughs> it's just facts, guys. <laughs> so, so yeah. So there, uh, Red's underneath the water. He's trying to find some items. He's looking for a um, an HM, in fact, that might help him traverse the waters. What HM um, is that, Kelly? And well, it could be cut, but it's not. <laughs> it could be strength, but it's not. It could be fly, but, but it he ain't. is still looking for fly too. Let's not forget. That's true. But it's sorry, surf. I burped. Um, I'm he's so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know it's something that we all have done. <laughs> oh um, no. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so he's underwater, like swimming with his Pokemon, and then suddenly a Dragonite swims by, and it's enormous. I like how a Dragonite just swims and... by. That never happens. When does a Dragonite I know. swim I know. by? It's just chilling. He's just you know? having a little um, bath or something. <laughs> And so he wants to get the Dragonite out of the water to, like, you know, catch him or whatever. Um, <laughs> and he, he seems to think that the Dragonite's, like, pretty dangerous. He won't be able to get the HM Surf without it. And so he sends out Pikachu to try to, like, get that Dragonite. Pikachu shocks him, but Dragonite's just, like, mad oh, about oh, it. God. Oh, come, wait, so, can I talk about something real quick that I just noticed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in this panel, yeah. it looks like Polyrath has, like, human man legs, and it looks super weird. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at his calf muscles. It looks muscles. so weird. It's just like Polyrath That's really looking funny. like Polyrath, but he has human man legs. And like all I'm missing right now is a butt in that picture. Just like a little, a little butt, really, a man really butt. Funny. That's what I'm missing. Hashtag Pokebutt. <laughs> um, hilarious. Um, so Dragonite is is too big. It's uh, uh, red, re reels in his Pikachu using what appears to be one of Venusaur, I mean Ivysaur's uh, vines. And then he sends out Snorlax because they're much more size. I want to talk about another kind of thing real quick. Get in a little kerfuffle. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, do that. Um, Pikachu is doing electric things underwater, and it's only hitting him in one place. What is that about? Yeah, that's not that how electricity works. That is not how works. science works. Uh, You're right. Okay, but sorry. Then again, <laughs> when has the Adventures manga ever had science that works? You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, but oh no, he's trying to catch this Dragonite. It's not working. And the Dragonite smashes the hidden machine of Surf. No. How is he going to be able to do it? Um, and, uh, and so things are not going well. He falls into the ocean. He's about to drown again because he always seems to drown. But who should appear but our best friend, Gyarados, Gyarados <laughs> and a mermaid named Misty. But actually it's Misty just wearing a mermaid tail. Very strange. But she looks... She looks like a full on she looks mermaid. Like a mermaid. Maybe she is. Maybe she's hit her 13th year. <laughs> she turned and into she's a mermaid. No mermaid. <laughs> oh um, no. That's uh that's one for for the old oldies out yeah. there. Yeah. Just kidding. The 90s kids. Well, was, I guess, is that the, that there. Australian show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On it was on so Disney funny. Channel the 13th year where I that love like kid that turns show. into a mermaid. So bad. Oh my gosh, me too. Um <laughs> But anyway, and so uh they they uh ward off the Dragonite there, uh, Misty's like, I'm back. I'm your friend. And I'm the best. Because she is the best. <laughs> she is great. <laughs> um, so thank goodness someone was able to swoop in and save Red, the worst trainer in the world again. Um, <laughs> You're mean. 
Suddenly her tail is gone. Uh, she just jumps out of the water and then... And she's not a mermaid anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's that thing that she... She pulled out a thing from her arm. Maybe that's what turns her into a mermaid. She's like, this thing's useless Maybe. now. Oh, no. That was the HM3. That was the surf That thing. Is, doesn't look like Maybe an she's HM. Just, I don't know. Maybe she's just a mermaid. It doesn't look like an HM. You're right. But it came out of the broken Pokeball. I wish she was a mermaid. I'm kind of sad that like uh, nobody was able to catch that Dragonite. Me too. It's a bummer. I don't think it was trying yeah. to catch you. That's though. the end of the I chapter. I think he was. He was. Um, just he was just trying to like not. He die just from wanted it. that HM, and Dragonite kept going like over it. I think that was that's what happened. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. but in then in chapter twenty five called You Know Articuno, we fly over Booby Island. We're ramping um, up. Booby <laughs> Island. Booby <laughs> Island. It's a place to be. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, come on. <laughs> It's, that's bo that's booty island right there. It's like in one sp thing it looks like booty and then it looks like booby. Yeah. Um, this show is rated Bo PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this chapter is about Articuno. I'm just talking about pirate treasure and the blue footed booby who is a yeah, bird. Same so. and boober. I don't know what your is mind the Japanese is going. name for Magmar. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. Um, Next chapter is about Articuno, and Articuno is my favorite of the birds, the legendary birds. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yay. I, th I think it's a good one. I think it's my second favorite. My favorite is Zello Cool J. Um, what? The Zapdos. No, the Zapdos. Zapdos is ugly. <laughs> no, Moltres is ugly. Zapdos is cool. I don't know. Zapdos looks like um, Norbert from the Angry Beavers. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, what uh, what is actually happening? I don't know. Oh, Red is trying to learn how to sit on a Gyarados without just falling off all the time. And it's not not going well. He falls right. off a lot. He's, he's not having a great yeah. time. And because since he broke the Surf HM, she, he has to borrow Misty's Gyarados to well, be He doesn't have to, surf. but Misty is like, hey, man, you can borrow my Gyarados, but you can't ride it. But borrow it anyway, and I will take your Krabby in return, which is an unfair trade. But, you know... Yeah, it is an unfair trade. And this Gyarados is a happy... Well, you know, she wants to trade yeah. it up. And this Gyarados is a happy, cute-looking Gyarados. He's just having a good it's time, like, look, loving life. <laughs> look at yeah, it. Yeah, it's adorable. It's, it's like got a sing-song because it loves a butterfly. It's, a, it's having a great so time. So cute. <laughs> um, the sweetest Gyarados in the world. Yeah. But what are they doing? They really want to catch this Articuno. They, they're... Um, Red is like, okay, guys, this time our opponent is the legendary bird Pokemon Articuno. If you sense anything mm -hmm. at all, let me know right away. Got it? And then uh, he's like, oops, forgot Gyarados. Gyarados pops out, but he doesn't seem right. He seems a bit, he seems a bit anger, boys. He seems mad seems again. mad again. Like he's possessed again by Team Rocket. And yeah. what happens? And lo and behold, <laughs> Team they're oh there. No, the boys of Team Rocket appears. And they're like, this is our Articuno. It's ours. And they want it, but it's not theirs. It's not theirs. They're just saying that. It's no one's. It's a wild creature. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful and majestic, and it should be free. Right. right. <laughs> and then um, and then it appears that they've sealed away the Articuno in ice. Which it should be able to break out of, because it's an ice Pokemon. Oh, I mean, it has sealed itself in ice. Oh, it sealed itself in ice? To itself to in protect ice? itself from Team Oh, yeah, yeah right. It sealed itself yeah, in ice Articuno to just likes confrontation. When it senses the presence it's of an not. enemy, it seals itself in ice. Some more... It doesn't seem like that's a great idea, though. No, it's right. No, you, they can just get a fire it's a bad Pokemon escape and plan. just burn it out, right. right? Yeah, yeah, very silly. So Red is trying to um, get Gyarados to, to like first of all defeat Team Rocket, but also get this Articuno to like be a happy boy. Um, Gyarados mm -hmm. looks crazy and angry, and it's not great. And Red is like, you know what? I don't care about this Articuno anymore. I want my Gyarados to be happy and safe. So he um, uses his Pokemon to like calm it down. And it does calm down at some point. But I think at this point, Articuno is like, okay, this is boy, you know, he's not paying attention to me anymore. I'm just going to like try and defeat Team Rocket, which it does. Mm -hmm. It seems like all the legendary Pokemon sense his good spirit. And they like always are like, I'm going to help us do yeah, that. Yeah, and it's cute. It's cute. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's the power of being nice and kind and 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 do, doing good in the world. Yeah. But, you know, um, Gyarado of Gyarados, Articuno got away and Red is like, oh, no, he got away. But it's OK, because everybody came together to help our new two team member. Come on, guys. Yeah, this journey's and, uh, just getting started. And everyone's like, yay. <laughs> Life's great. And Gyarados is happy again and he's feeling good yeah. and everything's, everything's great. <laughs> Life is great. Nice. That's what they're like. Yes. But um, wasting no time, it's time to now find the Holy Moltres. 
The holy, which I don't know if that's a pun on anything. Holy Moses. But that's chapter 26 or adventure 26, if you will. Um, they are, uh, he's surfing on Gyarados over to uh, Cinnabar, Cinnabar Island, Island because that's his next point of, point of destination. Um, but there seems to be some sort of scuffle going on on, um, on, the, on the side of the island. And oh no, who, what is happening? Team Rocket's there too because they're every darn where. They have nothing. They're really ramping up yeah, their operations. they have nothing better to do. They're just everywhere, just chilling. Right. But why are they there? I wonder. They're trying, they're trying to get the legendary Pokemon Moltres. But who is fighting against them? Uh, actually, they're fighting against Blaine. No, they're trying to find Blaine, who, I think. They're, yeah. They're, well, yeah, there's Team Rocket. Oh yeah, they're fighting, they're fighting against Blaine. And then they see Red and they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to get... We're gonna have to get red. Ha ha. Not this kid. And Ugh. um Yeah, I know. They're like, they're about to get him, but Blaine's like, you leave that boy alone. And he comes in and he swoops in with his freaking powerful Pokemon. And then Gyarados comes out of the water and they team up with Rapidash and Gyarados and they're like fighting against Team it's Rocket. A fight fest. It's tight. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so cool. And though and then Blaine rides on like rides past Red, picks him up, scoops him onto his his Rapidash. They're like running on the Rapidash and talking like it's crazy. (laughs) I know it's so cool. And he's like he's like we gotta. I I was a scientist for Team Rocket. I turned against them. We gotta help. We gotta help Moltres or else they're going to kill it or whatever. And so he's like going. He's like going on Rapidash. They're trying to get back to the lab. Um, But uh, but then Moltres comes out of the air and like there he is and it's time to fight him. And they're like, no, we can't fight him. And so he tries to use he tries to use Rapidash to like you know help weaken the Moltres, but like it's fire Pokemon, so it doesn't really do anything. Um, so Gyarados does his best, but it's like pretty overpowered. It's like not. Uh, it's like it's it's like flying up too it's a high. It's like, it's like got the like, match. What do you, you know? expect? It's what do you expect? Yeah, it's legendary. <laughs> and so like Blaine's like, it's too hard to fight him without another flying Pokemon. And then suddenly. Um, Red falls down and the uh, the mysterious fossil pops out of his pocket and Blaine's like, what is that? Like, and he's like, oh my gosh, you have to take this to my lab right away and use the machine to revive this fossil right away. Go, 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 says go, 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 is, go, go now. He calls it ancient amber, which sounds way cooler ancient to me. Ancient amber. Than old amber? Yeah. yeah, ancient. I think that maybe it should have been called ancient amber ancient instead of old amber. amber in the game. Ancient. Yeah, and so he's like, get back to my lab. Go, 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 now, now, now. And so he's like, I'll hold him off. And so Red's like running to, run to the lab on Rapidash. And he gets into the lab. The Rapidash is like, go over there, go over there, use the machine. And um, <laughs> he's uh, he's a smart boy. <laughs> at first, at first, Red, at first, Red is like, wait a minute, this guy used to be in Team Rocket. You guys are trying to trap me. This is bad. And Rapidash is like, no, man. And he like kicks him, and he's like, come on, don't be an idiot. Do what we tell Here's you to a do. Book. Read it. And boy. so be smart. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and, he, and he like brings in the book about fossil revivification. Is revivification? Reviv- Reviv- revivification. Yeah. revivification. That's a, that's the word of the day, and um, it says uh, that you, if he puts the fossil on the machine, it'll come back to life. And so he does, and the machine goes, bzzz, 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 and then suddenly, out uh, of the machine comes a freaking aerodactyl. Well, first it's like a tiny fetus cool that goes, mom, 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 mom. I know, and then it starts to grow, <laughs> which is probably what they're doing for that Mewtwo. They're probably doing that. You know, this was probably precursor research to that. If we're being yeah, real, yeah, and he's like covered um, in ectoplasm. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, but then of course, like all of Red's Pokemon, the Aerodactyl is already like nice and like ready to ready to go to yeah, bat for him. Red doesn't and know so, what Pokemon it is. He's like, oh, this is cool, but what the heck right. is that? <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, cool, a dinosaur. <laughs> and um, and then it picks him up and takes him out of the lab um, and back to where the uh, the fight is intensifying. Gyarados surrounded by flames, very very, very scary. scary, everything very yeah. sad. But swooping in comes this Aerodactyl with uh, holding red in his in his talons, and um, he's able to do some like supersonic. I think it's supersonic, right? It right? Is that um, what it is? I don't sonic. know what it I is. I think it's supersonic, it. or it's like it, Dragon Rage. No, I don't know what it is, or something. It looks like it does, supersonic, but anyway, does. and so it's called Wahoo. Yeah, <laughs> the attack is called Wahoo. Wahoo! Wahoo. <laughs> oh, Aerodactyl! And yes, then Wahoo. he's like, Woo. and then it's revealed. That one of the Team Rocket members actually owns this Moltres because he's like, shoot, Moltres, return. And Moltres comes back into a Pokeball. And they're like, oh, snap, they got one of them. That's not good. There's only one of them. And uh, yeah, only one of them so far. <laughs> but um, but uh, but anyway, so like they, they peace out. And then Blaine's like, dang it, I'm so sorry. I helped to make Mewtwo. It's a threat to everyone. I have to undo my, my, my work. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, you can go back to wherever you need to go. I'm going to try to work this out. So Blaine's like... And then away. there's Sabrina looking cute in her Team Rocket outfit. And I just love her. I think she, she's the greatest. She's stylish. She's so brooding. She's very, she's very, yeah. very good. I love, I love her, her too. She's my, um, one of my favorite um, gym leaders from the Kanto region. Yeah. Yo. Um... <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, basically, so she does like a report back or the guy with the Moltres does a report back to Sabrina, who is teamed up with Koga. Lieutenant Surge is there and Giovanni's there. And it looks like the bad guys are all starting to gather and it's really scary. And, um, and like before, right before the end of this chapter, which is like, I, I guess it's the beginning of the next chapter. It's basically like a cliffhanger, like Giovanni's like. Now that our Mew project is is ruined, we're going to get all of the legendary birds, and it looks like they actually um, it looks like they actually were able yeah, to get them. Yeah. So that's not these that's not will good. be our that's aces in the hole. Ha 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 ha! Very very scary. Um, but then we pop to our next chapter, which is chapter twenty six, yeah. twenty seven, and our little girl Green is here, and she can't. Our friend she Green can't go to Saffron City. Saffron City has been blocked by a. Um, psychic force field, which is crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Blue can't go in, red can't go in. But before we go any further, I think something is very cute. And I, there was something else earlier in the in the book, where um, in the Pokédex, the map is the same as in the game. First of all, which I think is great. I know, I love yeah, that. Yeah, but earlier yeah, in the game, great. you could see that um, Red was fighting with his Pikachu. And it says, oh my, oh no, its HP is low. And it was looking at its HP in its Pokedex. And I thought that was so cool. I was like, wow. Do you think, like, that is really cool. I just thought that was great. That's yeah, cool. that's Yeah, it's like Pokedex functionality, but like the menus are the same as like the game. That It's cool. It's like a really cool bridge between yeah, the real yeah. Pokemon world and like the game that we're used to. I like that. I, yeah, I, I you can definitely that tell that good, like uh, this has been inspired detail. by the game a lot. And uh, well, obviously right. it is. But I just like those little things that are like, oh no, this is from the game. And you're like, ah. <sighs> feels yeah, good yeah, nostalgic awesome. and stuff but yes. we can't get into saffron city uh no saffron is it it is uh, saffron. yeah saffron yeah. cities that's um, that's that is red the one. can't go in blue can't go in um green can't go in she's flying around with her jigglypuff just um you know telling telling blue that <laughs> Blue's like, I just pretend I didn't see that when uh, Green flies around <laughs> on her Jigglypuff. And she's warning him like, hey, man, you can't go in. There's a psychic force field. But who is doing that? We don't know yet. But Re in the meantime, Red is going to Pallet Town. He's going back to Pallet Town to go say hello to Professor Oak. But Professor Oak seems to be possessed. See if he knows anything about this. He, <gasps> yeah. Possessed. He looks crazy. He looks evil. Like they made him look evil and possessed, and it's kind of funny. Yeah, like he has he, he has a little evil, evil curl on in front of his head. Like, like before I turn evil, let me just do my hair real quick. <laughs> um, he's like, what? Yeah, he's he's angry. He's slapping red. He's like fighting the Pokemon, being crazy, and it turns out that our creepy girl lady Sabrina, she's here. In her cute Team Rocket uniform. In her Team Rocket uniform. As usual. Looking adorable. <laughs> She's here and she um, used um, Alakazam. Is it Alakazam or is it Kadabra? It's Kadabra. Oh, she yeah, she Kadabra. used her Kadabra to possess Oak and to possess Pokemon and to be crazy. Can I shout out Bwetch? Yeah, I was just going to say Bwetch. <laughs> Bwetch. <laughs> Bwetch. She is a real Bwetch. Bwetch. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she doesn't say, why is she here? She wants to stop Red. She says, if you want to save, she's like, she's like giving him a, she's like giving him an ultimatum. She's like, if you want to save the citizens of your town, of your hometown, you got to meet me in Saffron City. I'm going to come get you. And then he's like, well, I was, that was what I was trying to do anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't have to tell me that lady. <laughs> yeah. And so she pieces out and then uh, Blue comes swooping in on his Dragonite and like, he's like, we got to get back to Saffron City right now um, because something crazy is going on there. Right. Yeah, and that is oh, and oh, and blue ends with um, the final battle between our two forces is about to begin. <gasps> oh snap! But it's only volume two. No, what could happen it's after this? Over. Um, Pokemon Adventures Volume Three Final Showdown. Okay, I, I love this. I love this. The uh, the thing that it says. It says. It says, protect the town, Pokemon Adventures Volume 3. Can they break through the Saffron City barrier? And then it says, I'm here yeah. too. And it's just green. <laughs> I'm here too. It's me. Final it's, showdown. See it with your own eyes. It's me, green. Eyes. I'm cute. I'm so, here. Hi. That's the coming soon to Volume 3. Uh, 
which is let's uh, just let's just go through um, the Pokemon that uh, Red has right now, real quick, just in case oh, you yes, didn't yes, know. Yes, At the end good. of every team, every um, team volume, update. it shows all the Pokemon that Red has in his team now. He has a level twenty one Pikachu, then a level thirty eight mm -hmm. Ivysaur. Very strange. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it evolve yet? Oh yeah, that's true. But um, you know what it says? It says. Bulbasaur arrived into Ivysaur right before arriving in Celadon City. When will it turn into its final form? So it's probably like the next probably. episode. Probably. And uh, like all their nicknames are Pika, Sar, Polly, Lax, Guerra, and Arrow. That's weird. Yeah, it's like just parts of their names. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you just wait till we get to Gold and Silver. They're even oh. weirder. <laughs> <laughs> but Aerodactyl is level 25, cra like crazy. And Poliwrath is level 40. Like his Pokemon aren't very evenly trained. That's true. Yeah, he needs to even more evenly train them. Especially Pikachu. Come on, Pikachu is his ace in the hole. What hulk. I really like is at the end of this volume, there is a message from um, Mato, who is the artist of the book, um, and yeah. it has a really yeah, it has a really cute picture. Kelly's also yeah. showing it, but um, and it says, "Message from Mato: Pokemon don't move in the video games, but in my manga, they run around all over the place. What's the most interesting way to show each Pokemon in action? I care a lot about that. I would be very happy if after reading this manga, people who have never even heard of Pokemon before become fans, and if Pokemon fans grow to love Pokemon even more than before. And I think that's cute. I'm like, he just like puts his little message there, and he's just... Yeah. Gonna... And um, after this uh, volume, there's a message from him after every... Oh, really? Every, uh, that's cool. I like after that. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Want to uh, yeah. talk about this volume real quick? Yes, um, I really love this volume. It's got some like really, really like classically like fun stories yeah. in it. It was, um, it was. I think that I feel it was dark, but there weren't like as many gross parts in it as that were as in volume one, where there were like really dark and gory bits. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. No slicing, no slicing. Yeah, Arwak in half. It's pretty gross. Um, <laughs> but they did shatter those magmar. Like that was that was, that was some confirmed magmar death there. That's not that, a fan that's of that. Pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, but I did, you know, the, a, a, I feel like a lot of the times people get mad at like filler episodes, but I think that the ones in Pokemon Adventures are super, super fun. Like the Safari Zone episode. Yeah, they're and short. What was they're the other short, one that was so it's not one? that bad. I mean, I wouldn't even call it a filler. Yeah. I mean. Oh, and the swap, the Pokemon swap. Like, I love that. That's it's, my favorite it's chapter. It's cute. And they just sure. like give a little more character to the stories. And that's what I really like about them. Mm -hmm. And of course, Green, mm -hmm. who is cute, very cute character. Um, oh, is Wallace trying to say something about Green again? Yeah, he's getting he's getting excited again because I think that somebody like moved around in the in the back oh. of the house. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, he says. But uh, if I were to translate what he just said, he said green is hot. So yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, can't blame him. He's, I don't know. What she his is, deal is pretty cool. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> I I just um, I find this very interesting because the story is so so different than any of the stories you know. Like it's not like it's not yeah. like the games. It's not like the anime. It's just completely different, and it just gives you like a different view on on what the story could be and that's what i really like mm -hmm. yeah, like you there's obviously characters that you recognize and that you know and love but they might be not like they might not be what you think and oh <laughs> just keep that in mind for even later on in oh, the no. series when we get to meet my favorite character of all time really um, oh, i'm excited <laughs> well I, I guess that brings us to the end of today um Hilda, it's always a pleasure to it's have you. It's always a pleasure here. to talk to you in general. <laughs> yes, that is very true. Across space and time, across um, Dialga and Palkia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, and thank you all for watching our second episode of this podcast. Um, if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, um, tell your enemies to watch it because that'll make them so. Yeah, mad. that'll be um, the worst combat, like the best revenge. Be yeah, so yeah. bad. So good revenge yeah. for you. So. So fine yeah. for us. Um, uh, we'll try to be back a little bit sooner than last time. Schedules are crazy, but uh, we're going to continue our Pokemon Adventures manga adventure. You'll um, see it when you sometime, see it. Sometime later on. <laughs> yeah, you'll see it when you see it, bros. <laughs> um, but thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. And I hope you have a fabulous, cute, lovely day. Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>